Welcome to Office 2010 video number 20. Hey, in this video, we're studying Excel. We've already done two big projects in Excel, but now what do we want to do? We're going to take the next 20 videos, and they're a little short, each one's a short little video about a topic, and we're going to really break down Excel and learn it from beginning to end. Now, if you, we want to download some files um, before we do these 20 little short videos and follow along. If you click on the link below the video, it takes you to this page, and then for the Office 2010 videos, you've got to click here. If you're enrolled in the class, you always go to this website or through our Angel website and then click on Excel, and boom, here it is. Excel is fun. Now, here's the deal. You can have my uh, free Excel book. I've been using it in this Business 216 class for years and years. You've got to download it and print it out. It's about 140 pages. Now, the videos, um, if you follow along in the videos and actually take notes, you don't have to read this book, but it's there because some people like to read. Now, this book is going to cover the same topics as the videos. However, the videos will have a little bit more content, but that's for people that want to read. So you've got to click it and download it. Also, the next 20 videos, approximately, I'm not sure how many exactly the final count will be. There's a start file and all of the examples are going to be here. Now I'm shooting the first video right now and that is the finished version. Well of course I haven't posted that yet but I just have the link up if you click on it uh, um, when you're seeing this video that means I've already posted it. Alright so I'm going to download this and as always we are never going to click this button right here open all sorts of trouble we're always going to click save and save it to our computer now where is the location for this class we're saving it to our jump drive highline this is uh, winter whichever quarter you're in you click that business 216 class notes and finally excel notice there's our two projects we have already done i'm going to um, where do you want to save it boop what do you want to call it that's fine and then uh, save as type. Now, I do want to change the name. If there, there's, um, well, there's a book and there's videos, and for the book, if you're doing it at home, you want want might want to repeat some of the problems. So I'm actually going to download this two times. The start file, I'm going to click my cursor at the end, and I'm going to say. Um, video. So this is the workbook I'm going to use with these examples while watching the video. And I'm going to click Save. I'm going to click Close. And then I'm going to click it again, Save. And now it knows exactly the right place. I'm going to say uh, this one is for reading. Right? Sometimes uh, it's worth doing some of the examples a couple times. Again, there are some things in the uh, videos that will be on the test that are not necessarily in the book. Alright, so now we're ready to go. We've downloaded our files. I'm going to go over to uh, Windows Explorer and find my... I have all sorts of drives open here. Highline, Class Notes, Excel, and I'm opening the one that says for videos. Alright, now in this video we're going to um, talk about what the title of this is What is Excel? We've kind of covered some of these topics already. And then I want to talk about the ribbons and the quick access toolbar. And I want to show you how to customize uh, those. Now, the first thing is, the first sheet is What is Excel? And this is a, a rather large workbook. Our first two projects we had just a few sheets, but notice how many sheets there are. Now before we navigate through the sheets, I just want a little review here. Now in Excel, there are two directions. There, there's column, which you can click on a column, uh, C, D, E, F. Notice that the letters go from left to right. And then we have rows. Rows go up and down. All right. So there's a column, that's the D column. There's row 10 and the intersection of those two. It's called a cell. We can see the name of the cell up here. That's D10. So columns, rows, cells. Now all the cells are called a worksheet, or just a sheet for sh um, short. Um, and in our two, first two videos, we, we learned that this, this sheet name is the name of the sheet. Right, so this is called What is Excel? We learned how to name sheets. It's easy as double clicking, typing, and hitting Enter. I'm going to click Escape. Now notice, we could take our cursor and click through the sheets. 
And now, what are all the sheets called? And we'll, in just a moment, I'll show you how to navigate through all the sheets. But what are all the sheets called? Because we have column, row, cell, sheet. And all the sheets are called a workbook. The workbook name is up here. That means workbook and file are synonyms. So the name of this file or the name of this workbook is Excel 2010. It's fun. Start for videos. Notice the extension .xlms. All right, uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. But we need to learn how to navigate. The first couple of videos, we just had three sheets. Now, no problem. You could take your cursor, as we learned in the first couple of videos, and click. But oh, wait a second. When I click on this one, I see a new one. Oh, and there's more. Wow, there's a lot of worksheets or sheet tabs with the name of the worksheet in this workbook. So we can use our um, cursor and click on the sheet. Another way to navigate, now watch this, I'm on Math 2 right now. When I click on this arrow, it moves the sheets but not the active sheet. So I can move it this way or this way. This one right here goes all the way to the end, but notice this sheet is still highlighted but it shows me the first sheet. This one goes all the way to the end, but again, you can see there's lots of sheets, but the active sheet is somewhere hidden way over here. All right, I'm going to click uh, all the way to the beginning and click right here. Now, really what you want to do when you start to get into big workbooks is you got to learn the keyboard shortcut for moving through the sheets. And the beauty of this keyboard shortcut is that it will combine the mouse click and the, um, the capability of these arrows all in one. So you ready? I'm going to move the sheets and move the active sheets using control page down. Now the page down or is a page down, page up is a navigation key. Look at your arrow keys over on the right side of your keyboard. There's home, end, page up, page down, and arrow. So I'm going to hold control and page down. Notice what happened, right? It, it's moving the sheets and the active sheet. So now I'm going to control page down and watch this when I get to math two. Oh, that is so cool. A keyboard shortcut to move through the sheets. You can see these sheets are becoming exposed. Now when I hit control page down right here, you can see it highlights the copy and move sheet, makes it the active sheet, and shows me more sheets. So control page down. I'm control page and down all the way to the end. You can actually just hold control and hold page down and it will go brrrp. I'm going to do that right here. I'm on the very last sheet. I'm going to brrrp all the way to the beginning holding control page up. So ready? Brrrp. And just like that I can go. So that's the way we want to navigate. I'm now doing control page down. Brrrp. Now file extensions. Uh, we talked about this a little bit when we talked about Word. I'm going to hit the F 12 key. By this time in this class, you know what F12 means. It's save as. And what's beautiful about save as is we can save the location, change the file name, and change the extension. Now, when you do that, save as, it actually creates a second file. Now, there's .xlsm. And I'm going to click the drop down for save as type or file extensions. The file extensions by default in 2010 is .xlsx. That x and that m are extra letters above and beyond what we had in 2003 and earlier. It used to be we just used .xls. The x means there's no ability to create VBA code, which is beyond the scope of this class. But it means that you can't go behind the scenes and write code to do all sorts of things. Ah, the m. M is for macro, and it means we can write code. Again, it's beyond the scope of this class. If you want to learn a little bit about it, you could take my uh, Business 214 class, Advanced Excel. It's actually called something like Spreadsheet Construction in the uh, catalog. All right, so X and M, they are a new file format starting in 2007, and they are more efficient than this earlier .xls. They save as a file, a smaller file size, and they can communicate with um, more programs than this earlier version. So it's actually a better file extension. The only problem is that some people that don't have 2007 or 2010 either can't read your file or have to get a converter. All right. Um, and 
there's a bunch of other file extensions also. Um, in Word, we learned how to use a bunch of them. Um, templates, which are right here. Here's the one for um, 2010 with macros. Here's the one for 2010. So templates, same idea as we learned back in Word, same with web page. All right, I'm going to click Escape. All right, now what is Excel? Excel does two things, right? There's two broad categories. And the first category is, oh yeah, Excel can do calculations. That's why out in the working world, you, you don't use handheld calculators anymore, or at least you use them extremely rarely. You uh, create formulas in Excel. And in the first two videos, we saw how a little bit how about how to do that. So if I click in this cell and hit the F2 key, F2 puts the cell in edit mode. Actually, let me hold control and roll. And I hit the F2 key. You could see, oh, there's a formula. It's adding up the two cells to my left. I'm going to click Escape. I'm going to click there and hit F2. Oh, that one's creating, uh, we have a formula that calculates. Ew, gross. Pay minus the total de deductions gives us net pay. Actually, it should be um, total pay and ew, gross deductions because they're taking it out of our paycheck. All right, so Excel is great at doing calculations. That's number one. And the, the possible calculations are virtually infinite. The second thing that Excel does is data analysis. And data analysis just means we take raw data and we organize it in some way so that it's useful for making a decision. A very basic example of data analysis can be seen right here. And we'll see lots more uh, great examples later. But here's our observation set. And this is the order in which we uh, took these measurements. These are times. These are actual minutes for some process. And what we're interested in is we need to organize this to see the fastest time to the longest time. So imagine that this is a process for manufacturing and we want to see the fastest times at the top. Well, one example of data analysis is <coughs> to sort. Now in 2007, 2010, there's a couple great ways to sort. On the home ribbon, there's sort over here. There's also right clicking. Now this is a data set and we'll talk extensively later about how data has to be set up in order to do to use all the data analysis features in Excel. The basic rule is you have a field name or a column header at the top and all the data is below. Anytime you have a new column, you have a new field name or a new column header. These are uh, our field names or column headers and below is the data. As soon as you have a data set like this, you're allowed to do data analysis um, actions like sorting. Now, if I click in I13 and invoke sort, the entire data set will be sorted. Now, before we do that, this, um, I want to actually highlight H15 to I15 and add a color. I want to prove to ourselves that when we actually sort, the record, this is called a record, the row of data will be retained. All right, now let's try it. Sort. Remember, this is data, a simple example of data analysis, organizing our data. I'm going to click an I13, right click, sort, and point to A to Z, sort smallest to largest. And instantly, the whole data set is sorted. So we've taken raw data, organized it in some way so it is useful for us. Now we can clearly see the shortest times with the observation number at the top. So data analysis, calculating the two broad categories of what Excel can do. Now, uh, two last things in this uh, video here. We want to see how to uh, customize the quat and customize the ribbon. Now, in 2007, you had the ability to customize the quat, but in 2007, you could not customize the ribbon. All right, let's first start with the quat, the quick access toolbar. And we actually saw this back in Word, but it is a very useful thing to know how to do. So I'm going to do it here in Excel. 
right click the quick access toolbar and point to customize. Immediately opens up um, Excel options up here and quick access toolbar is automatically selected. Very important you want to come over to choose commands from and select all. And then there it is. This list of over a thousand items is everything that is built in to Excel. All of the features. Now the nice thing about this list is if you had something that you did in earlier versions and you can't find it in the ribbons, you can look through this alphabetically sorted list. Here's an example. Let's click on five point star. Right there, if I point my cursor to it, it says command, not in ribbon. Right? So you knew that you used to use the five point star. It's not anywhere in the ribbons. You come here and boom. Now, what if you want to use it? You simply select it and click add. All right, so that's how to modify uh, the or customize the quick access toolbar, and then you click OK. Now the ribbon, the ribbon uh, can be customized. Also, we're going to right click. Oh, by the way, there's our star, right? And as we talked about in Word, the beauty of the quat, and let's say right click, show access toolbar below. The beauty of the quick access toolbar, of course, is whenever you go to a ribbon. These are always visible. So the, the idea is you, you load this up with the things you do all the time. And if you're always working on the data ribbon, right, then it's nice because these items are here. You don't always have to go back to home or wherever it is that that item might be listed. Now the ribbons, uh, home, the idea for the home ribbon was that everyone, the Microsoft crew put all the items that people use mo most of the time here on the home ribbon. Insert, that's for inserting items like charts, pictures, etc. Page layout, uh, actually in our first two uh, videos we used insert and page layout. Formulas, data analysis, when we do our data analysis we'll use this a lot. Review, view, and finally there's this ribbon right here, the developer ribbon. This ribbon does not come showing by default. So now we want to see how to customize the ribbon. Not only add this ribbon, uh, which is already a built-in one, but add our own new ribbon. All right, I'm going to right click, customize ribbon right there. Notice instead of quick access, now it's customized. We definitely want to say choose commands from all. That way we can see all of the things that Excel can do. And over here, this different than earlier 2007, now we have the option of showing. So by default when you get your installation developer is not shown, so I'm going to come over and click it. That actually <coughs> shows that one right there. I must have a frog in my throat. And now I want to add a new ribbon, make my own. And what's nice about this is you could put all the things that you do all the time on one ribbon and then have it showing all the time. All right, uh, escape. I'm going to come down here to new tab. I didn't mean to click up there. I meant to new tab. Sure enough, there's the new tab. I'm immediately going to come right here and click rename. And I'm going to call this favorites. Click OK. And I'm going to name this group. Right click rename is an option to go in, uh, down there. Wow, you can put uh, an icon if you want. I'm not, I'm just going to put data analysis. All right, so I have my little group. The things I use all the time, I'm going to put a pivot table in the sort dialog box. I'm going to click someone here and type a P to jump to the P's. And then I'm going to select Pivot Table and Add. You can see it appearing right there. I'm going to go down to the S's, the Sort, Dialog Box, Add. Now I could add as many groups as I want, so I could, you know, whatever other groups. But let's just see how this works and how easy it is um, to add a ribbon or edit any of these for that matter also. I'm going to click OK. And sure enough, now we have our favorites. So you see the idea, just like the quat, you, you put all the things you do all the time, but you could just, in essence, build your favorites and have it showing all the time. Great new addition in 2010. All right. Um,
that's it for this first video. That that uh, ran a long time, 20 minutes. The most of the rest of the videos will be a little bit shorter than that. All right, we'll see you next video.